Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I wanted to briefly tell you a little bit about the upcoming Space Engine version 0 0.990. This version is still not publicly available just yet, but I wanted to kind of briefly tell you about the beta version that I'm part of and also uh, describe to you some of the coolest new features. And as you can see, one of the biggest, hugest probably one of the most advanced features in this uh, new version is that everything is going to look absolutely and totally gorgeous. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So I decided to start uh, my game right here on this random Kepler planet um, far, far away, and just to give you an idea of what an average planet will look like in the new space engine. There is its star right there in the background. And just to kind of introduce to you some of the coolest changes in the game, but also some of the biggest changes as well. So I think the biggest change is definitely the graphics. They've improved pretty much everything. The textures will be better, the lighting effects, the... Um, the surface generation of planets, uh, rendering effects will be much more improved, and also even the bloom effect will be better if you use it. In other words, everything will look absolutely beautiful. If you actually, or when you actually get 990, the first planet you start on um, is actually, it's not a planet, sorry, it's a moon of uh, some gas giant somewhere far away. It looks so realistic that I, I was blown away when I saw it. Unfortunately, I lost the coordinates for that object, so I can't really show it to you here. But as you can see, even an average planet, procedurally generated average planet, looks a lot better than it used to. So graphics are definitely improved. There's also new music, um, although once again, it's sort of not really open source, as in you, you can uh, get flagged for it on YouTube. So be careful when you use it, but there's definitely more uh, music available. And... Uh, if you are a VR fan, Oculus and HTC Vive will actually have total and full support with the new Space Engine. I don't really like using um, Oculus Rift or uh, HTC Vive, which I have at home, uh, with um, space games, mostly because despite all my experience with space, they make me ridiculously space sick, or I guess something sick. Uh, you kind of start getting dizzy and it doesn't really feel good if you play space games with VR, at least in my case. So I'm probably not going to be using this, but for those of you that are interested in VR, this might actually help you uh, discover the new sort of view of the universe. And uh, you might even be impressed by what you see. Uh, the other thing that is going to be improved are the nebula and galaxies, and specifically, you now can actually uh, even generate your own textures for them, if you know how. Uh, so you can replace textures and basically the actual looks of galaxies and nebula, uh, making them look very different from how they used to look. And um, the actual land features, so let's actually maybe find a planet to land on so I can show you. All of the land features have been redefined as well. So let's let's go find a random planet. This one, for example. And um, basically the rifts and the valleys and all of the features on the surface of the planet will actually look very different and much more detailed, much more realistic. Wait, is this a gas giant? That's a gas giant. I can't really do anything here. There are no more textures here. But as you can see, even the uh, Neptunes and uh, other gas giants uh, have actually been improved to the point where they look much more beautiful than before. Okay, here's one, Kepler-397b. This is a Megaterra. So let's go on the surface of this Megaterra so I can show you what some of the uh, rifts and valleys look like in the new version of Space Engine. So here is just a randomly generated, um, I guess it's a rift. I'm not actually sure what to call this because it looks very unusual. Uh, but this is something that um, you wouldn't really see in the own Space Engine as much. But here, these are much more realistic, much more beautiful and much more unique as well. So definitely something exceptionally cool. As a matter of fact, I don't even know what this is, but it looks amazing. Uh, so, all right. So what else have been uh, added? So first of all, 
If you've ever used autopilot with um, different uh, vessels in the game, you know that it was kind of difficult to use before, but now they added waypoints, which are an actual objects, so you can use your craft much easier. And uh, on top of this, if you go to single player, uh, you can now... Oh, I'm on Earth, apparently. Uh, you can now do this. So let's actually get a craft here. Uh, you can edit your your vessels. So first of all, let's jump to it really quickly just so we can see what it looks like. I can now go into edit mode and edit what this looks like. It's already flying somewhere, as a matter of fact. I think I sent it on an adventure by itself. Um, I can go into editor, and there's actually quite a lot of new things here. Uh, th some of these already existed, they just didn't have their own sort of box dedicated to them. But like, for example, uh, here I can edit the ship. And I can now go ahead and select uh, a module, like for example this fuel tank, and then just make it 10 times bigger on every size. And look at that, that's pretty crazy. It's basically a flying, flying tank. Um, so, really, really cool. You can basically redesign your vehicles to look the way you want them to look, and you can create your own vehicles as well, and download more from um, Space Engine repositories, and then just make them look to how you want them to look. And speaking of editing, so some of these actually did exist in the game before, but they just now receive their own sort of uh, box you can click on so like this here allows you to edit a way a planet looks this is planet editor as well uh, nebula editor is a new thing so you can edit nebulas to basically um, appear as you want them to appear changing their look completely uh, so there's a lot of new uh, ways for you to essentially modify your game Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention about ships is that now they have a lot of physics included in them, including um, engine thrust, uh, the mass of the ship itself, and a lot of more accurate calculations of how engines actually generate thrust and how ships propel themselves through space. So all of this has been added, um, or will be added, in 990. There's also this really cool new system that basically generates links. Okay, this might not make sense yet until I show you what I mean by this. Let's find a randomly generated planet. Okay, these are all of these are um, known to us. So we're gonna have to go a little bit farther away. Uh, or it doesn't have to be a planet, it could be a star. So let's say I found a really cool star I wanna share with the world. I wanna show everyone what kind of a cool star I found. So right here, this star doesn't actually have a designated name because it's procedurally generated. And before it was kind of difficult to share them. Now there's this new system that you can actually access by going to settings player and right here you can register what's known as se uh, column slash slash protocol which allows you to generate links to these objects now to have this activated you actually have to uh first log in as an administrator and start a game in admin um uh, with admin privileges and then basically this will kind of edit your registry and allow the game to modify links and so you'll be able to generate these links and people will be able to open them so that's actually really useful for those of you that like to explore and find new objects and share them with people there's actually a whole community of people doing this on reddit we also have a lot more planemos and rogue planets uh, and specifically uh, there has been a sort of a redesign of how planemos are discovered, how planemos um, are calculated, and most importantly, uh, we now have more brown dwarfs as well, which suggests that uh, that also will have or will produce more bodies flying around space that don't have stars around them. So rogue planets will be more common. And also the definition of brown dwarf has been changed to be only sort of a brown dwarf, only if the mass of the planet is over 13 masses of Jupiter. Um, there is also new rings around planets, so if, for example, if I try to find a maybe a random planet, if I can find one, you might actually find uh, rings around them. Okay, this one doesn't have any, and those rings are procedurally generated and also have unique new features, so they'll actually look a little bit different from how they looked before. So let me see if I can find one really quickly. Here, here you go. So these rings will now look very different from what they were like before, including um, creating rings that are more invisible, sort of like the E ring of Saturn. So, okay, this one doesn't seem to have any, but you'll sometimes find an, uh, an invisible ring on the outskirts, or hardly visible ring on the outskirts, similar to E ring of Saturn. And uh, the one thing I actually wanted to show you is also the names and the classifications of planets. So all of the planets have been changed in the way they are, are presented. There's a lot of chemistry that goes on behind the scenes. So um, 
air, for example, and also liquids and actual um, solid composition of a planet will have various chemical uh, parameters. And so planet can be either airless or desertic or lacustrine or marine or oceanic in terms of the kind of air it has. It can also be um, a Neptune or Jupiter if it's a, a, a sort of a gas giant, or it can be an Aquaria if it's water and ice. It can also be Rocky or Feria or Carbonia or Terra. Uh, I think actually the best way to find or to see these is to go to Trappist-1, uh, because a lot of these do have these very unusual names. So let's jump there. And that, this is all based on the chemical composition of the actual planets. So here we have a mini Neptune, an oceanic Aquaria, cool desertic Aquaria. Oh, and by the way, the first prefix here uh, basically represents the temperature. Uh, we have Terra, Aquaria, and I guess the rest are Aquarius because they're mostly ices. But Terra would be more silicon-based than metal-based, and Feria would be more metal-based, not uh, silicon-based. I haven't really discovered many Feria's yet, so I can't really show them to you yet. But maybe in one of the future videos we'll get to see one. Uh, there is also um, a new sort of a redefinition of what a dual planet is. So if an object has a moon and the moon is about 20 or more uh, times le less in mass, in other words, let's say you have a planet that's about 20 masses and then a another object orbiting around it that's only one mass, this would be a dual planet. In other words, technically, Nept oh, not Neptune, Pluto and uh, Charon should technically be dual planets. Unfortunately, they're not, because people are being stubborn about reclassifying them. But this is technically a binary planet, right there. And, oh, by the way, look at that. Can you, can you see the actual atmosphere? This has been redefined a little bit, so now it's much easier to see the atmospheric cover of Pluto, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so yeah, Pluto and Charon, they're technically binary planets because of this new redefinition. And uh, most of the oceans in various exoplanets have been classified under uh, several uh, types of compositions. So you can have uh, water, ammonia, carbon dioxide. Um, you can also have uh, sulfur dioxide, hydrocarbons, and mixtures of these um, various components. And this will redefine how the planet looks, how it sort of behaves um, in terms of temperature, and also what its name is. So basically, the chemical composition of planets and the interaction of various chemicals on the planets has been made much more complex and creates a very cool, very diverse way various planets will actually look and behave. You can also now discover planets that uh, would be automatically classified as mini Neptunes if their atmosphere is over a thousand atmospheres and um, also some uh, ocean planets might actually be classified as mini-Neptunes if they have uh, what's known as a supercritical fluid that forms on their surface. So, definitely a lot more complexity to the game now. Uh, and, as you can see, some planets will now have really awesome features on the other side that will look absolutely incredible. This is very, very beautiful and very magnificent. Now, um, all in all, the game will actually have a lot of improvements. It's still not the final version, obviously, but um, uh, the vast majority of these improvements basically make it an almost complete release. And um, I honestly can't wait for the 1.0, maybe in a few years, but uh, even this right now makes this one of the, if not the best simulations available out there. If you haven't tried Space Engine yet, you definitely have to give it a try. And, uh, I, I mean, I'm not really associated with the programmers of this game, and I don't really know who they are, to be honest. But I gotta tell you, you have to give them a donation if you are a big fan of the game. They added this button just to help people donate, because they basically are making this completely in their own free time. Um, this has been started by one person, I believe there's several people working on the project now. And um, it's actually... This is kind of how I like software. I mean, it's, you know, it's open source, it's free to play forever, and it's never going to be um, sort of a simulation that will have any uh, DLCs you have to pay for, for example. Even if one day they start charging for this, it will totally be worth the money. And so, all in all, I'm actually really impressed with how Space Engine has been advancing over the years, and I'm definitely impressed with what we have here so far. So, uh, once it comes out, do give it a try, and potentially support the team behind this game as well. 
Anyway, if I missed something, I'm sorry, I didn't really cover some of the uh, minor additions, but uh, the list is uh, on the forum, you can check it out, you can read through it and see what they changed, or will change, I guess, when it comes out. All in all though, I'm definitely impressed and we'll be using this game for years ahead. Thank you so much for watching guys, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.